Hi there, Rachel Chase here, and in this video we will explore indirect proofs for proof by contrapositive, or contraposition as it's sometimes referred to as. Now, contrapositive or contraposition is something that you learn about when you first deal with logic. Remember, the contrapositive of the conditional is where you flip and negate both sides. So if your conditional statement, which is what any direct proof technique requires, is if P then Q, the contrapositive, remember, is not Q implies it's not P. So in order to use this as a proof technique and understand why it's a viable proof technique, we need to think about the following. When you learn logic, you learn that the contrapositive is the only statement that is logically equivalent to the conditional. Something that's logically equivalent means that it also holds the same truth outcome by default. So if you can prove that the contrapositive is true, because it's logically equivalent to the conditional, you've proven that that conditional is also in fact true. Let's take a look at an example here. Now something that's similar to using a proof by contradiction is that you still have to set up the statement at the beginning in a proof by contradiction, you assume the opposite is true, so that's setting the stage. Whereas a proof by contrapositive, you're going to start by saying you're going to use a proof by contrapositive. Make that statement clear and accessible to whoever's reading this. So for our proof, we will use a contrapositive, so a proof by contrapositive to show this is true. Now to do that, we actually have to figure out what P and Q are and how we can flip them around. If a sum of two real numbers is less than 50, then at least one of those numbers is less than 25. Why is this a viable candidate for proof by contrapositive? Well, trying to show that at least one number is less than 25 is really quite difficult. You would have to come up with every single combination of how those two real numbers could be less than 50. So instead, let's flip these around. So P is over here, and this is that X plus Y, right? Their sum has to be less than 50. What's the opposite of that? Is that their sum is greater than or equal to 50. Q is that x is less than 25 or y is less than 25. So not Q would be that x is greater than or equal to 25 and y is greater than or equal to 25. So now we have a little more to work with. So let's take a moment here and assume that x and y are real numbers, since that's what we're referring to, the sum of any two real numbers, such that x is greater than or equal to 25, and y is greater than or equal to 25, which remember, the contrapositive flips these around as well. It doesn't just negate them. Okay. So take for a moment x greater than or equal to 25 and add that to y is greater than or equal to 25. That gives you x plus y is greater than or equal to 50, which is in fact what we were trying to show. So this proof really is not very time consuming. It took probably more time for us to identify the contrapositive and state that that's what we were using. So let's justify this. Since we have shown the contrapositive to be true, we have proven that, and restate your, your original, for all real numbers, If the sum 
of two numbers is less than 50, then at least one of those numbers is less than 25. can keep in mind that's not exactly what we showed, but because we were able to show that the contrapositive was true, which is logically equivalent, we have in fact proven that this statement is also true. Thank you for watching.